we are live. Welcome everyone to Wellness Sessions for Musicians. This is our weekly session where we focus on a variety of different topics related to musicians wellness. I'm Francesca, I'm the chair of the Puerto Rico Flute Symposium Wellness Committee. I'm just going to state a couple of housekeeping things before Jessica introduced our very special guest Meg Griffith today. So we're so excited to have her on the wellness sessions. Um, so in regards to Spanish translations, we are still working on the live auto captioning. Um, we are getting a little bit closer each time, but there is a login provided in the event description below that you can log into and you can view the live streamed captions from there. You go to streamer.center and then you type in the login credentials that are in the post description. So if you are looking for that, um, be sure to log on to Streamer Center and you can get the live translations. Um, I believe that covers it. If you would like to have a copy of the MP4 file, if you're a teacher of this video um, to send to your students, just go ahead and either write a comment below or send us an email at wellness at prflutesymposium.org. And I'll let Jessica take it away with the introduction. Yeah, we are so delighted to have flutist Dr. Meg Griffith with us today. She teaches at Texas Wesleyan University, and she's also a certified yoga instructor. She offers yoga for musicians with classes that are geared towards simplifying and solidifying the physical and mental practices of artists. And her approach reflects our need for awareness, compassion, and love for ourselves and others, especially within our musical community. So she helps uh, each individual build their personal foundation for calm and clear problem solving and full appreciation and focus on the moment through both physical and musical expressions. You can um, find out more information about her or even book an appointment through her website, meggriffith.com. And we'll have that in the comment section so you can access that later. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Griffith. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, so what I wanted to mess with today um, was actually how to apply all the stuff that we talk about all the time. Um, because I know if it's me and I'm performing, I'm not thinking about my foot, you know, or my hand or my whatever. I'm thinking about what I want to say. And therefore, some of the good things that I may have discovered in my practice just go out the window. And I know that can be uh, frustrating, to say the least. So um, well, the point of today is kind of to figure out where your inner concert hall is and understand where that's located and how it feels for you. So just to preface today, everything is based very personally on what you're feeling. These are examples, of course, and, and I want you to explore them as you like. You can explore with, you can explore with your instrument, um, whatever you want to do. Um, but they're going to be tailored to you in the end. So start here and then keep going because you're going to find your spots and your spots are what, going to, are, what are going to support you when you're anxious or nervous or um, when you just really want that powerful sound or the funny sound possible, you know, that kind of thing. So um, this exploration um, really shows you what parts of the body are connected. And we're actually just going to be simple today and we're going to divide the body into four quadrants basically and use those to explore. But those quadrants can be, you know, microscoped even further, you know, to look at one little spot if you want to do that. But what's really cool, and I hope you will be able to discover it, is that if you do something to one quadrant, it does something to another quadrant, you know, the whole knee bone connected to the something or other bones, you know, so it, it really shows how one thing can affect others. The main moral of the story there is that when you find your specific spot that just speaks to you, it's gonna affect everything else. And we're really sticking with the body because as a general thing, I'm a flutist as mentioned, um, but it works for every instrument. So if you're tight, for instance, here, it comes up into your arm and that's your bowing arm and therefore your bowing arm isn't as fluid and things like that. So while I'm demoing on flute, the movements can still be used and explored and then that leads you to the next thing. Um, so that's how I'd like you to approach it, not thinking that it's just for flutes because we have a lot of problems, right, flutists, but we, uh, we aren't the only ones, so we're all in this together. Um, so let's get to it. Um, so how do you get to performance? So we need to figure out what's going on here. And what I want to say first is that everybody's a little bit different. 
Um, and everybody has different needs. I'm going to stand so you can see most of what I'm doing, but feel free to sit. You do not need to stand up at all. Um, this can be done really anywhere. The other thing that I want you to be aware of is your own body. I'm going to be doing movements that demo what I'm talking about, but I'm going to demo them a little bit large so that you can really see them. So you don't need to bend as much as me. You don't need to go as far. It's really important that you keep that in mind. Um, I'm purposefully trying to be clear safely, and I don't want you to overextend something just because you think you should. So just keep that in mind in terms of your exploration. It might, you, you might move an inch while I'm moving probably way too much, quite frankly. So first off, we just need to greet these muscles and say, what's going on? Especially in the time of COVID, we don't get to give hugs anymore, which is just killing me. Um, but you can give yourself some hugs. So give yourself some arm massages and really anywhere. And the idea would be to just explore waking up the muscles. So for starters, you're just moving around and giving some squeezes and some rubs is as forceful or not as you like, right? Your, your taste. And the idea is that it just wakes those up feels good, <laughs> so there's that. And then it also wakes them up and brings blood flow to those areas. And the thought would be that right now, you're actually more aware of your arms. All I did was squeeze up and down, squeeze up and down, and I'm more aware of what's happening here, okay? The next thing would be to just do some friendly rotations. And again, I'm going further than you maybe wanna go, but the idea would be to notice how you turn inward and how you turn outward and just notice where you feel like you can get to. If it's only here, great, that's totally fine. What matters is that you feel it. And then you can explore the shoulders too. So you can ground them. And again, I'm being exaggerative and really think open and closed, which affects then the chest and the upper back, among other things. I mean, notice I'm going with it, right? So it's also affecting down here too, which we're gonna do. So this is the top part of us. And then you can even just do some general movements just to see how they feel. And then once you've done a little bit of that, I mean, that's really all you need. Feel free to do more. I think it feels fantastic. So I could do this for 20 minutes, but we'll let it go. Just kind of shake your arms out, real loose. And then pause a minute. Can you give yourself a big sigh? And notice what you feel sensation-wise. Temperature, perhaps. It might feel like a different temperature. So you're just aware of your body all of a sudden in a different way. And these are the parts we're gonna use. Now we're gonna actually skip to the bottom here. We're gonna do some back and forth. And all I want you to think is if you're in a chair, you can do this too. Just come up onto your toes. And if you're in the chair, the idea would be that you just lift your heel and engage your calf. That's all. And you can do one leg at a time, or you can do both. It doesn't matter. So I'm just kind of rocking on my heels like I'm, I don't know, bored waiting for a bus or something like that. And then if you want, you can include some little knee bends and thinking about what your thighs are doing to do that. If you held for a minute, if you're sitting, you could just engage, you could bring both heels up, engage your calves and try to lift the bottoms of your thighs up. And they don't have to go anywhere, it's just an action, you know? And it creates, again, engagement, even temperature changes, right? Depending on how tight your thighs and stuff are. So the more you mess with that, and then shake your leg out. It just feels good to like let go of some stuff. It's almost like you're shaking the tension off onto the floor or something like that. And again, that can be done seated. So then again, pause. Lots of pauses to just look around. What do you feel now? Legs and arms, shoulders, and give yourself another of those big deep sighs. <sighs> do those all day. Now let's do the middle of us in circle. So you can, however is comfortable for your arms, come around the back, however you like, come around the front. Basically you're, you're giving yourself sort of a hug, but you can also look at it like an inner tube, like a little kid's inner tube when they jump into a pool or something that goes around the midsection. And that's what your arms are. You don't need to squeeze, you just start holding. And then you wanna breathe into that. And the idea would be, and I'm gonna exaggerate, the idea would be that the circle that you made expands when you breathe. So it moves. So I'm just going to take a few breaths. And then if you continue that, you learn a lot about where you are and aren't moving. Just change it a little bit now. Put your hands on your sides. 
And you can go up or down, really both are good. So you could try different spots. Here's down, you wanna think about breathing into your fingers. And then if I go up, again, breathing into the fingers. And then you can reach all the way around anywhere you want. As you can see, this could be expanded. And then once you let go of that, you feel very open here. Let it just be. And pretend your hands are there. And again, pause. Take another breath. Breathe into your hands, quote unquote. They're there still in your mind. And then lastly, be very, very kind to yourself with this. Let your head just drop. And it's all gravity based. It is not pushing or anything like that. I'll show you how to bring it up in a second. Just let gravity hang on it. And if you want, you can do little angles where maybe the ear falls one way towards one shoulder and then the ear falls the other way towards the other shoulder. They're very gentle and it's very, 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 again, gravity based. When you feel like that's complete and you're, you feel pretty good about it, take your hands and just outline your face with your fingertips and push your head up. So your neck is not doing the work. It's all in your arms and it's supported. And then take your head and just kind of go in a little circle. Like you're, you have a laser pointer and you're drawing a little circle on the ceiling. And then again, just take a deep inhale, let it go. So that wakes up what is going on here. And depending on where you are with any of these things, some part of it may feel more obvious to you than others. So we're about to do our four quadrants. We basically kind of covered them. The idea with this is any kind of stretching really does this, but the massaging is just a friendly, nice way to do it. Now I'm gonna show you on flute, again, what, what I'm talking about. The idea here is to take the exercise and do wherever you want. So we're gonna, we're gonna go from the bottom up. So our four quadrants are basically your legs. And again, there's tons going on down there. So please divide that up if you want to later, but feet basically up to the thighs in this area. Then the next one will be the pelvis area and then the stomach, ribs, lower back, that kind of area. And then the top of us, the chest and shoulders. And again, there's way more, but this is a starting point. It can get overwhelming and I, fully am aware of that. So pick something that seems interesting to you. So what I want you to mess with are opposites because it's all well and good. And, and this is from my own experience. It's all well and good to say relax, but then do you relax? You try. So then for me, I get more tense. You know, like I am relaxed. I'm more relaxed. I swear, you know, and things like that. And you gotta, you gotta learn what that is because if you live in, like me, tend to live in, a, in an area of tension, Switching to an area of non-tension is very challenging, just all of a sudden. So we're gonna do opposites. So the idea is to listen to the difference and we're using flute to hear that. Hopefully it'll come through on the, on the speaker. Um, if I tighten my legs, and I'm picking a note that's easy, a G in the middle of the flute staff, it's nothing special. And the idea is that it's nothing I have to think about and I can hear clearly what the differences are. So if I tighten my legs, one could argue this is locking, be careful with it. I don't want you to pass out, but the idea is that you're getting tight in the legs and you're holding yourself up like you're ready for somebody to come at you, being on stage, right? So then if I hold my G in that position, and then I loosen my legs. I purposefully tighten them and now I'm just kind of walking them and I'm moving them around. And hopefully you could hear that there was a little bit more resonance there. Um, a tuner is really interesting with this because you can drop your tuning greatly when you mess with it. If I do it during, the, I'll do it half, the first half of the G will be tight, the second half will be loose. And the idea is that I could feel the transition to looseness. 
because I did it while I was playing. And that's a really key part of what we're messing with here is hearing the difference. It gives you incentive to keep trying. Another one then, second quadrant, would be your, your pelvis. So if I have a tendency, for whatever reason, I don't really know, to stand a little bit more sway backed. Um, lot, some people stand more, more tucked. I don't know where you are, but this is where I tend to be for some reason. If I stand that way, if I allow that, Again, hopefully you can hear this, especially the change in pitch. And I, I, I'm really trying to be the same, except for the thing I'm changing for you. So I'm really trying to keep it legitimate for that. So then what about stomach, third quadrant? What if I tighten the stomach, which of course is how we want to move and get air and things like that, or um, be able to, to properly give ourselves power on the piano and things like that. How do you, how do you use it if it's all tight and scared? So if I tighten, and this is where the, my G helps. So if you have an instrument where you can hold the one hand and have a free hand, it's really nice. You can touch your stomach and feel how tight it is. And it's not allowed to move when I breathe. That's the, that, this is the wrong way, obviously. See my hand barely moved. But when we did our circle earlier, it moves in and out. So if I tighten it, Now I'll tell you what I'm feeling. In tightening that, I can feel tightness in my pelvis down into my legs. And it also makes my throat tighter because I feel like I'm holding. So clearly this is a big one for me because I feel it a lot of places elsewhere. So if I change that, and I loosen it. And again, I just move around and try to find it, let it go. Same with the back. If I'm really tight, if I, in order to be tight, I have to tighten my stomach and other, other things. Then I can find more resonant spaces, which allows me to uh, just frankly play easier. Um, one last one for the quadrants, and then I'll show you how to apply this more. We have the chest and the shoulders. And I know for flute, and I imagine for many others, and especially these days on, on Zoom and all these different things, yay for Zoom, thank you Zoom, but we're so that right now. It's really harmful to flute, um, and it really shuts things down. So again, I'm kind of exaggerating so you can see, but it's that collapsing. That's a good word for it, collapsing. you end up with a more open space here. In addition, by the way, this awareness then that we just went through, and you can spend as many hours on this as you want, there's so many things to find. This awareness actually brings um, two things into play that are really important. One is that, again, that idea of, of lot less anxiety, which of course leads to more tension because you know what to expect and you have a support system that's there with you. But the other thing is that it makes you healthier. And I know we want that, but I do think we can have both the performance aspect and the healthy aspect. And I, and I know that these guys are amazing for, for bringing that to our attention. Um, but being aware of it then makes you be able to say, oh, I didn't know that my right shoulder's up all the time. And therefore that's why I have back pain over here. I thought it was my back and it's actually my shoulder and it really makes you aware of your body and it makes you a partner with your body rather than it's this shell that you walk around with all day. So thank you body, we don't, we don't think it enough. So the idea then is exploration. Step one, figure out what you like, what is very interesting to you. I guarantee you that if you start this, then let's say you do it for a little bit, maybe even only a day, maybe a few weeks, I don't know, it depends on the person you're gonna all of a sudden find that that thing you thought was amazing over here that was perfect is now feeling so much better, but now you realize you're doing that and that and that. And so it really makes you aware of new things, which I know can be kind of like, oh my God, it's never ending, but it, it does make you, I don't know, it's I'm an nerd. I think it's really fun. All right, so how do you put this in here? The, the best thing I can ever say to you are fermatas. 
period. Fermatas are the best thing anyone can ever do. Um, and so getting used to those are the important thing. I'm gonna use octaves to start. We often leap into things a little too fast and then we wonder why it doesn't work. Um, and I think that if you give yourself time and look at it like transitions, you're trying to walk across a stream, use the little rocks that are there, don't try to jump across, you know, that's fun, you may fall in. So if you use octaves, then everything feels differently. So the leg lock, if I lock my legs and I do just four different octaves. And then I undo them. All of a sudden I have, I'm a different person and I, I feel better. I will just also say it feels good. Um, then there's the pelvis idea. So as you can see, that was an example of just messing with it. What do I feel? And if I don't feel anything, move around, you'll find stuff. And if you hear stuff, the tuner will help tell you. Then move around, you'll find stuff. It makes it really simple. Um, that's, what, that's what I need. So that's what you're getting. I need simple. So the same things happen with the stomach and the back and the chest. And I'm using octaves because for flute anyway, they're a major thing for us, especially before you get to the upper octave fingerings. Um, but then what do you do after that? So that's like your big longer warm up. This is the important transitional thing. If you take fermatas and you put them on more technical things. So currently I'm just gonna use a scale. You would start with an easy scale. I'm just gonna do a C scale. I'm gonna put a fermata at the top. The fermata is what tells you whether or not you need to change anything. If you just play the scale, you may notice but I'll be honest, I didn't at first because it was too fast. It was too busy. I don't care how slow I played the scale. I was too much thinking about what to do to play the scale. And in this case, if the fermata is there, it's the only reason it's there. So even if you forget during the scale, because you will, because you're human, you'll remember maybe during the fermata. And the idea is to listen during it and fix during it. Try not to stop because the transition during, you'll learn faster. So if I did, um, if I did tight stomach. And then I let that go. You can go any speed you want. I'm moving the fingers so that I'm distracted. I'm thinking about getting up there, but you could go slower. If I did it during tight stomach, then if I, what if I did that a bunch of times, breathing wherever I needed to? Each fermata, the goal would be to get quicker at the response. Oh, I'm sharp again. Oh, I'm tight again. And then you fix it. And within a few times, you're fixing it within one beat, within a half a beat, within no beat. You did it perfectly that time. Yay. And then it starts affecting everything around it. Um, if I do it with the chest, for instance. If I do it with one shoulder up. Actually, I tend to be the left, so I'll show you my left because I tend to have a bit of a, I don't know why, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do there, but. And I really am trying not to do it anywhere else, but I will tell you that when I do that, it automatically tightens my, my throat. So if that's happening then, what is it doing to, again, a bow arm or how you're gonna reach the keys on the piano, et cetera, it really makes a difference there. The last step, so again, this, this is something you would look at and say, okay, I started my long tones and figured out my body. I put it into challenging things, perhaps octaves or high notes or whatever, things that I know I have trouble with that I wanna see, does it make a difference or not? Then you put it into things like scales, perhaps to that high note that needs the look at, and then you realize, oh, there I am, I figured out my problems. How do you get to music? Again, for modest. So I'm gonna use a piece, I'm just gonna use a very small little bit of a piece, uh, it's flute to pen, okay. 
Why did I choose this? Let's say I have troubles with my octaves. Let's say that I have issues with high notes and I need to make them a little bit smoother and feel, feel better. If I am tight in my pelvis, then the beginning of this, I'm gonna play it normally first so you can hear what it sounds like for those that aren't for this. I'm gonna go a little slower. So it has all these loops and stuff. If I tighten my pelvis, I'm much more likely, we'll see what happens, I'm really gonna to try to tighten. Um, I'm much more likely to crack those high notes, I mean, sorry, the low notes as I come from the high notes, among other things. So we'll see what it comes out. But what it feels like to me is I'm playing with just this and nothing else. So if I loosen that, Fermatas, I was busy doing physical things. And because they were fermatas, I didn't have to worry about counting, I didn't have to worry about my notes and my fingers and blah, 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 blah. None of that had to be in here at that moment. This also helps with dynamics and other types of color changes because you have a support system. So you, you name it, it gives you something to work with that allows the resonance to be what you want it to be. The idea then, um, before I just ramble on, because I could talk about this for three hours. Um, so it's just interesting and fun, and, and I find the, the, the transitions between them fascinating by how they feel, like physically make me feel, but also how they make me sound. And I, it's, it's almost like I can hear literally my body becoming more open or more healthy or more free. And it's actually rather energizing because we all know how practicing can get if we're really, really stressed about it or we're busy or whatever, lots of repetition. There is no repetition in this because your body never feels the same way. Um, you're always transitioning to some new cool thing that your body is telling you about. And so you follow that and all of a sudden you have a new perspective. And that's, that's kind of the idea is it slows you down, makes you go inside you rather than thinking about what's on a stand because that's all well and good, but it'll be there tomorrow. This, this will be here every single day and changing. And it's your, it's your sound and this is your speaker. So make a good connection to it is, is the goal. So there you go. Have fun. Enjoy. Figure yourself out. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was such a wonderful presentation. And I could definitely see and, and also hear the differences when you were talking about the tense versus relaxed and present. And that is such an important topic. And I think we can all benefit from that so much. And it was just an amazing presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you. I, I'm going to go back and watch the recording again and play along because I'm really excited to start trying this. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. If you think of any questions, definitely say, because I mean, seriously, I could talk about this forever because it is fascinating and everybody's so different yeah. that it's just, and we all know that, but it's just a massive, you know, like I say, I think I feel it in my pelvis more generally, yeah. but it's clearly my shoulder. <laughs> so, you know, tomorrow will be different. It's really, it's really fascinating. I, uh, I've been dealing with a shoulder injury on and off for like the past 10 years. And I've been doing work with, with body mapping this year. And I've also done yoga and, and other body awareness activities that have been really helping, but I'm noticing that it's a lot more than just my shoulder that is contributing to the shoulder pain. And that's been so yeah. fascinating to realize. And you touched on all of those points in your presentation, especially the tightness in the stomach when breathing, because so many of us, I think, think of support as tightening the abdominal muscles. And then that doesn't allow us to breathe as, as freely. And so I loved that you demonstrated that because I, I know that I have done that. I've tightened my ab muscles because I thought that would lead to support and <laughs> It actually inhibited my breathing and ability a lot. So thank you. This was incredible. We loved it. <laughs>
Good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think how much the that we do that, and I think it's just a it, we carry a lot of tension there. But what about these these big muscles? Use them, right? <laughs> they're, they're there for a reason. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And um, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We have your information um, briefly posted on the description, but if anyone is interested in contacting Dr. Griffith after that, just shoot us an email and, and we're happy to connect you. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to hopefully working with you again in the future. So thank yeah. you. So um, Jessica, did you want to chime in at all before I close this out here? No, I just wanted to say I, I enjoyed it so much. And I love what you said about like being friendly at the beginning, because I talk about that a lot with my students at the piano and just like even before practicing, just like feeding yourself positive thoughts about the instrument, too. And just thinking like we're friends, like I enjoy doing this, you know, and just doing some easy warm ups that remind us that we love it, you know. It's not true. Like, not like you're going to war when you practice, which is sometimes <laughs> the mentality of like, I'm going to conquer this. <laughs> yeah, just really opening up curious and cultivating that sense of awareness slowly little by little that's yeah, so important so i hope that everyone will go and try this out in their next practice sessions everyone that's tuning in and thank you so much again to dr griffith for this wonderful presentation uh, we're so happy to have you and um, we will be off for the next two weeks on our little spring break so no sessions for the next few Sundays. And then um, we have some other exciting guest artists lined up for the month of May. Um, and then our symposium, the Puerto Rico Flute Symposium will be happening online in June, as well as the Puerto Rico Collaborative Piano Institute. So you can go on the Diaz del Moral Foundation website to learn more about those. There's masterclass performance opportunities. There's competitions you can enter. And the competition deadlines are all in mid-June. So it's about a month and a half away. So if you're interested, we really encourage you to look into that. Um, and thank you so much. And we will see you all in two weeks. <laughs>